Daredevil isn't just my favorite comic book character. He's my favorite character of all time. Matt Murdock is the most layered character in our generation. There's so many dichotomies associated with the character. He's a Catholic who dresses up as the Devil Knight. He's blind yet, in a way, he can see better than anyone else. He's a lawyer who breaks the law through vigilantism every night. And he believes in God, yet there's no shortage to the sins that he commits. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, how did Daredevil become such a complicated hero? In this video, I'm gonna go over why Daredevil is such a complex character. And hopefully after watching this video, this character analysis will help you develop a complicated character of your own. But before we move on, please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics. You don't want to miss out on our awesome content. Now, before we get into why Daredevil is such an interesting character, I'm going to give you a brief rundown on the character's history. Daredevil first debuted in April 1964 in the light-hearted and colorful Daredevil series. Daredevil was created by Stan Lee, Bill Everett, and to a certain extent, Jack Kirby. Now, even though these men created the Daredevil character, Matt Murdock is very much Frank Miller's character. Frank Miller introduced a gritty and hardcore tone to the Daredevil series in the early 1980s. Miller's run on the character was highly influential. Many artists and creatives who worked on Daredevil built off of Miller's gritty and violent vision for the character. Matt Murdock was born in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. His life started out in a pretty tragic way since his mother, Maggie Murdock suffered from postpartum depression after giving birth to Matt. At infancy, his mother abandoned him and became a nun. As a consequence of this, his dad, Jack Murdock, had no choice but to raise Matt by himself. Despite how Jack was an out of his prime boxer who oftentimes got into trouble every once in a while, he unconditionally loved his son. He often made Matt study so that he can build a better life for himself. One day when Matt was just an adolescent, he pushed a man out of the way from an out of control vehicle. Unfortunately for Matt, he gets blinded by a radioactive substance that falls out of the truck. Despite how he lost his sight, his remaining senses heightens to superhuman levels, and he develops an additional radar sense that helps him interpret his surroundings. Eventually, he comes across his mentor named Stick. Stick is the leader of a mystical martial arts enclave called The Chase, whose sole purpose is to fight the Hand, an evil group of ninjas who is led by a demon. Matt trained with Stick to hone his superhuman senses and martial arts skills. Unfortunately, Stig and Matt had a falling out since Matt wanted to become a lawyer to make his dad proud, instead of joining the chase. Now, later on, as Matt pursued his studies, gangsters approached Jack Murdock to throw one of his boxing matches. Jack, having too much pride, refused to throw the fight and bet on himself. As a consequence, Jack Murdock got murdered by the mob, leaving Matt as an orphan. Eventually, Matt used the money he inherited from his dad to study law at Columbia University. After graduating, he opened up a law firm with his best friend and college roommate, Foggy Nelson. Soon after, Matt Murdock seeks out the local gangsters who killed his father and brings them to justice as a lawyer and through vigilantism as his crime-fighting alter ego, Daredevil. Now that we know who Matt Murdock is, let's dive into why he's such a complicated character. Number one, Daredevil's faith. Now, there's a lot of interesting things to say about Matt Murdock, but in my opinion, I'd say that his faith is the most interesting. I grew up in somewhat of a religious family. We went to church on Christmas, Easter, New Year's, and on the occasional Sunday. Now this might sound odd to you, but what really interested me as a kid was why certain people believed in God. To me, Matt's faith is really interesting. Frank Miller made a really amazing observation on the character. He said that Matt should have been a villain. And this makes sense if you think about it. His mother left him when he was just a baby. His father got murdered by criminals, his other father figure, Stick, left him, and in his adult life, a lot of his loved ones ended up betraying him in big ways. And for crying out loud, he's dressed up as the devil. Almost everything about the character screams villainy, except for his faith. Had he not had his faith in God, he probably would have given in to temptation, chose the path of violence, and killed a bunch of criminals, including the kingpin. And I'd argue that how his faith shaped his subjective viewpoint on the world cleverly challenges what it means to be a superhero. In Daredevil Born Again, Matt's ex-girlfriend Karen Page becomes a junkie. She ends up selling Matt's secret identity for another high. Eventually this information gets relayed to the Kingpin, which leads to Wilson Fisk making Matt's life a living hell. The Kingpin schemes to get Matt's law license revoked and his assets at the bank frozen. Matt was driven to homelessness and driven mad as a consequence of this. Thanks to the Kingpin schemes, 
Matt was broken mentally, physically, and spiritually. Yet, as soon as Matt figured out that Karen betrayed him, you know what he did? He forgave her. Now, ask yourself this. How many superhero stories out there cleverly explores the theme of forgiveness like Daredevil Born Again? I mean, Spider-Man 3 tried to do it, but they couldn't quite stick the landing. A lot of these superhero stories involve a protagonist that uses force, violence, and intimidation to achieve justice. And to be fair, Daredevil stories do that too. But the point I'm trying to make here is that why aren't there more superhero stories that involve the theme of forgiveness out there? After all, if these characters represent what is good, why not add a little more forgiveness to the story? Daredevil's faith makes him such a layered person. In a way, his Catholicism makes him an even more tragic character. He knows the difference between right and wrong, and yet, most of the time, he has no choice but to compromise his moral integrity. Seeing that the Kingpin bribes the judge and jury to corrupt the justice system, how else is Matt supposed to achieve justice without the use of vigilantism? It's as if he has no other choice but to be a bad person. His superhuman senses helps him identify people suffering. If he does nothing to help, he's sinning. Yet, if he uses violence, force, and intimidation to get justice, he's also sinning. The only way he can answer people's prayers is by going against God's word. And don't even get me started about how he must feel about himself. He hears that God loves him, yet he must constantly feel unworthy since he feels as though he has to go against his Christian teachings. Now, if you're developing a layered and complicated character, you don't necessarily have to make that character religious. To me, I think it's interesting when a character establishes their beliefs and watching whether or not they will follow through with them. Which leads me to my next point. Number two, Daredevil's humanity is put at the forefront. While Daredevil did some larger than life things, he never was a larger than life character. Matt Murdock reached his breaking point and then some. Like I mentioned before, Matt was broken mentally, physically, and spiritually in the Daredevil Born Again story arc. In future story arcs, Matt lost his mind. When life circumstances were too hard for him, he developed an alternate personality by the name of Jack Batlin in the Anne Noncinetti run. He even got hit by a truck and took a couple weeks off to rehabilitate. And he even made some pretty big mistakes. At the beginning of the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run, Daredevil accidentally kills another man. After recovering from getting hit by a truck, Daredevil rushes into crime fighting a bit too quickly. The ramifications of violence was brilliantly explored in the series. Daredevil out of practice attacks a criminal and as a consequence, the man accidentally dies from blunt force head trauma. Daredevil will forever and always be one of the most human characters as his limits always play a pivotal part of his character. And he can never live up to the highest form of moral integrity like all of us. What's even more interesting is to see how his humanity affects his relationships. Even though he tries his best to move past his traumas, he can never truly heal. Daredevil always had a long history of being a womanizer. While on the surface this looks cool, this says something about his character. Matt could never truly get close to someone since he's been abandoned by loved ones throughout his whole life. His mother left him when he was a baby, his father died at the hands of mobsters, Stick left him after he figured out Matt didn't want to serve the chase, and Elektra, the first love of his life, died at the hands of Bullseye. Close and intimate relationships are very scary to Matt as he never wants to relive the pain of losing a loved one. And his career as a superhero, oddly enough, reinforces his belief that he will fail his loved ones. And number three, Daredevil fails. What gets me engaged with Daredevil is not just his layered and complicated nature. It also has to do with the fact that I can never anticipate whether or not he'll win or fail in the next chapter of his life. Daredevil has defeated many villains Yet, out of all the Marvel and DC characters I've seen, he's the one character that took the most losses. As I mentioned before, Bullseye killed the first love of his life, Elektra. Then, in the Kevin Smith's Guardian Devil story arc, Bullseye killed the second love of his life, Karen Page. Bullseye even managed to kill Matt in the Daredevil End of Days story arc. This of course happened in its own bubble of continuity. In the Netflix Daredevil series, Matt barely survived an encounter with Nobu. And, like I mentioned before, the Kingpin systematically destroyed Matt's career, finances, and sanity, which drove him to homelessness in the Daredevil Born Again story arc. To me, Daredevil has gone through even more humility than Captain America. Now, what's interesting about this is that this does not discount Matt's accomplishments. Matt is a really amazing character. Despite the fact that he is a handicap, 
he's still able to do a lot more than the average person. Despite the fact that he's blind, he can still jump from rooftop to rooftop, stand toe to toe with heroes and villains, and be an effective lawyer. In a way, Matt is one of the few characters that embraces everything. He embraces victories and defeats, he embraces love and grief, and all of the pain and joy that life has to offer. For better or worse, Matt goes through it all. Anyways, there's so many interesting things to say about Matt. Despite how he's accomplished so much, he's still a guy that wrestles with a lot of doubt and shame. His dad, the one guy who unconditionally loved him, made it really clear to Matt that he did not want him to have a life filled with violence. And as we all know, the Murdoch boys have just a little bit of the devil in them. Hence, he can never live up to those expectations. But what do you think? What is it that makes Matt such an interesting character? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics. You do not want to miss out on our awesome content. Stay groovy.